Hi there, this is Professor Shannon Gracie from Miracosta. We are now on section 5.1 from the Blitzer Introductory and Intermediate Algebra for College Students. We'll be covering how to add and subtract polynomials. So when we're done with our homework, we'll be able to understand the vocabulary used to describe polynomials add subtra and subtract polynomials, and graph equations defined by polynomials of degree 2. Very important for your intermediate algebra. All right, so let's warm up by simplifying the following algebraic expression. All right, so go ahead and pause the movie and warm up. All right, let's see how you did. Remember that like terms represent the same variable or variables raised to exactly the same powers. So here, if we look, you see that I'm looking through term by term. Now remember, a term is a bunch of factors. Factors are you know, numbers and or variables being multiplied together. So negative 6 times x is one term. Positive 5 times y is another one. Negative 2 times x squared is a third term. Fourth term, negative 2 times y. And there's fifth term is positive x squared. So as I'm going through, I see, and you got to look directly to the left okay, of the coefficient to see what sign to apply. We have a positive 5y. We're going to combine this with negative 2y's, right? So when we do so, we will get the negative 6x goes along for the right because there were no other x to the 1's. Positive 5y minus 2y is going to be positive 3y. So this is the result of combining the blue, okay? And lastly, we have a negative 2x squared and a positive x squared. When I combine those bad boys, we will have minus 1x squared, which is just minus x squared. So combining the yellow gave us this result, okay? And we are done. Okay? How'd you do? Awesome! I knew you could do it. Okay, next up. Describing polynomials. A polynomial is a single term or the sum of two or more terms containing variables with whole number exponents remember whole numbers are your counting numbers but uh, they start with a zero, so zero, one, two, three, and on up. It is customary to write the terms in the order of descending powers of the variable. So at first we're going to talk about polynomials in one variable, all right? So here we go. This is the standard form of a polynomial. Now poly means many. Okay? So polynomial means many terms. We begin this chapter by limiting discussion to polynomials containing one variable. As I mentioned, each term of such a polynomial in X is of the form A is the constant times X to the N, where N is the power. 
the degree of a times x to the n is n. Now I know you've learned about how to find the degree probably many times in your life. What the heck does degree mean? Degree means the number of variable factors. The number of variable factors. So if you have 5 times x squared, let's say you had 5 times x squared. That is equivalent to 5 times x times x. How many variable factors do you have? Good. Two variable factors. So the degree is 2. Okay? All right. And officially, <laughs> we'll talk about that now. So the degree of a times x to the n. If a is not equal to 0 and n is a whole number, the degree of a times x to the nth power is n. The degree of a non-zero constant term is, what do you think? How many variables does the term 5 have? Good, zero variables. So that would mean that the degree is 0 if you're dealing with a constant. The constant 0 has no defined degree. Okay, so example 1, we need to identify the terms of the polynomial and the degree of each term. So I'll do the first one with you, and then we'll have you do the second one. All right? So let's make, uh, we can make a little chart. Okay, so we have terms, and we have degree. All right, so we have one, two, three terms. Oh, I didn't make it big enough. Here we go. Okay, so the first term that we'll write in is negative 4 times x to the fifth. What is the degree of this term? How many variable factors? Good. Five variable factors. Next term is negative 13 x cubed. And we have how many variable factors? Awesome. Three. And then the last term is positive 5. How many variable factors? zero, right? There's no variables. So the degree of that last term is zero. Okay, you guys go ahead and pause the movie and try the next one. Alright, let's see how you did. First term, good, negative x squared, and that degree is 2. There's two variable factors. Term after that is a positive 3x. How many variables? Good, we have 1. And then the last term is negative 7. The degree is 0. Awesome. Okay, next up. A polynomial is simplified when it contains no grouping symbols and no like terms. A simplified polynomial 
that has exactly one term is called a monomial. Mono means one. If you're monogamous, you're with one person. A simplified polynomial that has two terms, so how, how many, uh, a bicycle has how many wheels? Two wheels, right? So bi means two. So a polynomial that has two terms is called a binomial. Okay. And a simplified polynomials, polynomial with three terms is called a trinomial. A tricycle has three wheels. Simplified polynomials with four or more terms, they have no special name. They're just called polynomials. The degree of a polynomial is the greatest degree of all the terms of a polynomial, okay? Okay, so next up. Find the degree of the polynomial, all right? So here we go. Let's check out each of these terms. The degree of this term is good, 2. The degree of this term here is awesome, 8. And then the degree of this term is 4. So each of those represents degrees. So which number is the biggest? Good, 8. So the degree of the whole polynomial is 8. Okay. So the difference here, this represented the degree of each term. Okay, and then once we figured out what was the greatest, we found the degree of the polynomial. So what is the degree of the second one? Awesome. There's no, there's a, it's a monomial because it has one term. The term is a constant term. So the degree of the term and of the polynomial is zero. Okay. Very good. All right. Next up, adding polynomials. Recall that like terms are terms containing exactly the same variables to the same powers. Polynomials are added by combining like terms. Okay, so there are a couple of, you know, different ways a person can combine like terms or add polynomials, right? You can work horizontally or you can work vertically. And I'm going to go, we'll do A and D together, right? And then after that, you guys go ahead and pause the movie and see if you can do B and C, and you can pick whichever method you would like, whether you'd like to do it vertically or horizontally. Okay, so some of you guys are going to be working faster than others, and that is okay. As long as you, you know, have the 
correct answer, you're good. The first thing to look at here are the parentheses. Are these parentheses serving a purpose with the computations? No, because there is nothing to distribute. There is no minus in front of any parentheses, no number being multiplied to the parentheses. So that just grouped them to show you the different polynomials. So here we go. First off, we're going to rewrite this without parentheses. Plus a minus is minus, and plus a plus is plus. Okay, it already looks better. Now here is my advice. When you're first getting started, why don't you commute the terms so that like terms are next to each other? So do you see that we have 8x's and then negative 13x's? Those are like terms. Here we go. The constants are always like terms. So Rewrite this as 8x's minus 13x's minus 5 plus 9. Right? Those are the like terms together. All we did was commuted them, moved them around, and you always keep the sign directly to the left with the term. Now 8x's minus 13x's gives us negative 5x's. Negative 5 plus 9 gives us positive 4, and we're all done. Okay, so this is the result of combining the blue, and this is the result of combining the yellow, and your end result is negative 5 times x plus 4. That is working horizontally. Now, some people prefer to work vertically. So, here we go. Part D, when you're working vertically, you make sure that you put like terms underneath each other. All right. Now we are adding them. We are adding them. So when we combine our like terms, we have positive 7x squared minus 9x squared gives us negative 2x squared. Negative 5x plus 4x gives us negative 1x, which is negative x. Negative 6 plus 6 gives us plus 0. So then we have our end result of negative 2x squared minus x. And we're done. All right, so go ahead and pause the movie and work B and C in whichever manner you prefer. You mark, get set, go. Okay, let's see how you did. Oh, sorry. So for part B, again, we have parentheses that are not, you know, serving a purpose for us. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this without the parentheses because there's just, there's no, it's like a positive right here. And um, so that, those parentheses we can just take off without changing anything. And then again, plus 1 times all that is just what was inside the parentheses. So uh, plus 2y squared plus a negative gives us minus 6y plus a plus is plus 3. Now, commuting the terms and checking out what is a like term. We've got a 7y cubed. And you know what? I apologize because that is the only cubed term, isn't it? So that means there's no other, it, it, we'll just rewrite that one. There's no other term that is considered a like term with that one. But I see y to the 1 and y to the 1. So these two are like terms. And again, we've got constants, negative 1 and positive 3. So we have two sets of like terms. So I'm going to commute them. 
going to rewrite our 7y cubed. I'm going to rewrite the 2y squared so we can get these in descending order. Then we'll have that plus 5y minus 6y, and we'll have the minus 1 plus 3. A lot of you guys might be, you know, already combining them without commuting them, and as long as you're getting the correct answer, you're good. So, completing the combining of like terms, we get 7y cubed plus 2y squared minus 1y, which is like minus y, negative 1 plus 3 is a positive 2. So the blue combined to be this, and the yellow combined to be this. Okay. And here we go. How'd you do? Awesome. Okay. Next up, we've got the easy one. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and um, I did the other one horizontally. Do you want me to go ahead and do this one vertically? Um, you know, it's up to you. I guess we'll go ahead and do this guy vertically. So we'll have 2 fifths x to the fourth plus two-thirds x cubed plus five-eighths x squared. And then I'll leave a little space. I don't think there's any x to the ones on the other one, but just in case there were, it's good to leave a uh, space for it. Now again, we have a positive in front of parentheses. It's not going to change everything, anything, so we can just rewrite and we're going to line up the like terms. So negative 4 fifths x to the 4th. We'll have plus 1 third x cubed minus 1 fourth x squared and then minus 7. Right? Okay. 2 fifths minus 4 fifths will give us good. Negative 2 fifths x to the fourth. Two-thirds plus one-third is three-thirds, which is one, but I'll write it out. Three-thirds x cubed. Now this guy is a little bit of a problem child, right? So let's go to this, do some side work. All right, five, let me do a different color. Five-eighths minus one-fourth. We need to get a common denominator. The least common denominator is eight, so we need to adjust the one-fourth by multiplying it by two over two. This is going to give us five-eighths minus two-eighths, which gives us three-eighths. So over here, all right, so based on our work over here, we have the plus 3 eighths times x squared. And then down here we end up getting plus 0. And this will give us an end result of negative 2 fifths x to the fourth plus 3 thirds is the same as 1, so we'll get x cubed plus 1x cubed, and then plus 3 eighths x squared, and we're all set. All right. Let's move on to the next one. We subtract real numbers by adding the opposite of the number being subtracted. Subtraction of polynomials also involves opposites. 
If the sum of two polynomials is zero, the polynomials are opposites of each other. All right, find the opposite of the polynomial. So, in order to get a sum of zero, right, what would we need to do? And don't put equals because we're not equating anything. We're just finding the opposite. So why don't we just put it right below? X plus what is zero? Good. Negative X. Eight plus what is zero? Good, negative 8. So the polynomial negative x minus 8 is the opposite of x plus 8. So basically, if you just want to remember in an easy way, you're swapping the signs. So go ahead and you try part B. Pause the movie. All right, let's see how you did. The opposite of 12x cubed is, or negative 12x cubed is positive 12x cubed. The opposite of negative x is positive x. And the opposite of positive 1 is negative 1. So 12x cubed plus x minus 1 and negative 12x cubed minus x plus 1 are opposites. All right, so subtracting polynomials. To subtract two polynomials, add the first polynomial and the opposite of the second polynomial. Okay? All right, so here we go. Notice the difference. Before, we had a plus, an addition symbol between these two groupings of terms. Now we have a subtraction. So in order to take the second parentheses off, we need to distribute the minus sign. Right? So here we go. We'll get x minus 2. Now. This here is equivalent to minus 7x's minus 9. And now it looks just like the problems from before. So moving a little bit more quickly, we're going to have x minus 7x minus 2 minus 9, which gives us negative 6x's minus 11. All right? Now, subtraction can also be done vertically. I'm going to jump to the next page to D to show you how to do this vertically. So, this is my advice. This guy is equivalent to, again, distribute the minus sign throughout. So, all of this, I'm going to change. This stays the same up top, 3x to the fifth minus 5x cubed plus 6. Now, taking the parentheses off, I'll have a negative 7x to the fifth a negative 4x cubed and a minus a minus 2 is positive 2. And now it's back to just what we were doing last time when we were adding. So 3x to the fifth minus 7x to the fifth is negative 4x to the fifth. Negative 5x cubed minus 4x cubed, they've got the same sign. So we'll get negative 9x cubed. And then 6 plus 2 is 8. And we're all done. So now go back and you guys work B and C in whichever manner you're most comfortable with. Pause the movie and let's see how you did. OK. 
Okay, here we go. Again, this minus will be distributed throughout and that will result in us adding the opposite. So here we go. 3x squared minus 2x will have minus 5x squared plus 6x. Don't forget to distribute the minus to both of those terms. Now, commuting terms so that like terms are next to each other. We have 3x squared minus 5x squared minus 2x plus 6x. This gives us a negative 2x squared and then plus 4x's. How'd you do? Awesome. All right, let's go to the next one, the easy one. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'll just go ahead and, if you don't mind, I'll work this one horizontally. Again, we're going to be distributing this minus throughout and then combining like terms. So this gives us 3 eighths x squared minus 1 third x minus a quarter. Minus a minus gives us plus 1 eighth x squared. Minus a positive gives us minus 1 half x and then minus a minus is positive one-fourth. So the green resulted in this. Okay. okay, now commuting so that like terms are next to each other, we get 3 eighths x squared plus 1 eighth x squared minus one third x minus one half x and then minus one fourth plus one fourth. Okay, so the first one we get four eighths x squared because we already had a common denominator. But now we have to figure out this one third, a negative a third minus a half. So again, over here negative one-third minus one-half. I need to adjust the third by two over two because the LCD is six and I adjust the half by three over three. This is going to give us negative two-six minus three-six which gives us negative five over six. So we get minus 5 over 6 times x. And then negative a quarter plus a quarter is plus 0. So our end result, do you see 4 eighths, can be reduced to 1 half x squared minus 5 6 times x. And we're all set. How'd you do on that one? Did you get it? Well, keep, you know what, keep tracking away with those fractions. They'll, they will, you'll get used to them, I promise. Right? Now we move into graphing equations defined by polynomials. Graphs of equations defined by polynomials of degree 2 have a mirror, mirror-like quality. We can obtain their graphs shaped like bowls or inverted bowls using the point plotting method for graphing an equation in two variables. It is very important that you get the whole bowl or inverted bowl, or some people think it looks like a U shape or an upside down U um, without, you know, the tail on its end. The, it's very important to get both sides of it and to understand that when you have something like example 6A, 
you're going to get the, because you have y to the 1 equals, there's an x squared in there, okay? If you have a situation like that, even if there's another x in there, you're going to get that bowl or inverted bowl shape. And you have to just know this, okay? Just like you look at me, or I guess in your case, you hear me and you know I'm your teacher. So in order to get both sides, you know, usually you need to plot both positive and negative values of your x. So, you know, um, you just need to make sure you, you get enough numbers in there for x where you can get a picture going. So why don't we choose, I don't know, negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, and 3. And that those are the values we are going to plug in to the equation and we'll get solutions in ordered pair format. So, so far, we already chose these x values, so we already have the x coordinates of these ordered pairs. And we need to find the solutions given these the solutions, five solution points to this equation. Just like lines, there's infinitely many points that are on the line. Right? So here we go. Y equals, I picked negative 3 for X, so negative 3 squared minus 1. If you need extra scratch, just get another piece of paper out. Y is equal to 9 minus 1, so Y is 8. So we got 8 as a solution. So again, we're plugging in. We picked, we picked these values for x. Okay, That's what we picked. And we're finding the y values. Okay, So we ended up getting y is 8 for the first one. All right, I'm going to get the rest of the ordered pairs, and then I'll do the graph. So y equals negative 1 squared minus 1. y equals 1 minus 1. y equals 0. y equals 0 squared minus 1. So that would be y is negative 1. y equals... 1 squared minus 1, y equals 1 minus 1, so y is 0. That you, are you starting to see the mirror-like quality here? Negative 1 and 1 had the same y value. And then y equals 3 squared minus 1, y equals 9 minus 1, and hey, there it is again, y is 8. So, oops. these were the corresponding y coordinates. So I'll go ahead and do the regular scale. So my axes are x and y. 10, negative 10. So negative 3, 8, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 1, 0. This is negative 3, 8. Negative 1, 0. 0. Negative 1. 1, 0. And then 3, 8. So 3, 8 will be up here. And then now we just draw our picture. Oh. Oops, I don't like the way that one's going. And then we're going to draw arrows at the end to show that it goes up in that manner forever. Okay? And you know, honestly, it's still not quite there. Let me let me do a little better job here. Okay. I think 
that'll be a little bit, that's a bit better. More of a U shape. I'm not expecting you to be perfect, but I don't want to see any V's, okay? Or like a bunch of line segments. Because it's a nice curve. Okay. So your turn. You do the you do the next graph, pause the movie, and let's see how you do. And then after that, you'll be done with 5.1. Okay. Good luck. Okay, let's see how you did. Uh, I kind of liked uh, those values that we had done. So we might as well do them again. Negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, and 3. So I've chosen my x coordinates. And I'm going to be finding the corresponding y coordinates. So we'll have y equals 9 minus negative 3 squared. y is 9 minus 9. y is 0. y equals 9 minus negative 1 squared. y equals 9 minus 1. y equals 8 y equals 9 minus 0 squared, y equals 9, y equals 9 minus 1 squared. Here we're going to get our mirror-like quality. And again, over here. So the corresponding y values were so. So these were what we chose for the x values, and then we plugged them in to the equation. And then the y values okay so we can name our axes x and y do a regular scale will work fine okay so we have negative 3 0 1 2 3 we have negative 1, 8. We have 0, 9, 1, 8. And then 1, 2, 3, 0. So 3, 0, 1, 8, 0, 9, negative 1, 8, and negative 3, 0. And then making our picture. Now this one is going to be opening downward. And we make our nice curve. And we're good to go. And that is it for today. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And don't forget to do your 5.1 homework.